have a van, this is an articulated lorry, one male, heavily trapped. Across the UK, elite helicopter teams are saving lives every day. If I watch the OBS, can you maintain visual with him? Bringing the hospital to the roadside in a race against time. Right, OK, don't look at that, mate, look that way. Once I give him the drug, I want him out in two minutes, all right? These are their stories. Come and give me a kiss if you want. She's been an absolute star and very, very brave. All right, sweetheart. Norwich International Airport. Home to the East Anglian Air Ambulance. Blue map bags in the front, black map bags in the back. Behind the pile are oxygen times three. On call 365 days a year as a mobile trauma unit, it covers a 70 mile radius from its Norwich base. A colleague approached me and said, um, you know, you really should be flying. And I said, oh, you really don't want a small middle-aged woman in glasses. And he said, no, we really do. You're exactly what we want. I've worked with Pam for quite a few years. And she's like your mum. Yeah, she's lovely. You know, I never feel like I'm working with someone and I'm the doctor and you're just a paramedic. It's one big team and, and uh, we work together to achieve the goal and get the best outcome for that patient. Hello, Norwich. Tango Fox Shot. Search. RTC traps. Crew quest. Thank you. On the way. The team have been asked to scramble to a road traffic accident 40 miles away, 20 minutes by air. RTC person trapped, um, crew request on scene. And if it's multiple persons, we might have a bit of triaging to do. What makes people work inside? I think that was quite interesting when I was little. The armor pressure, one zero, one. I had this image of myself in a white coat with a stethoscope. It's just what I wanted to do. OK, we've got traffic here stopped. Both directions. Yeah. And got the ambulance. Okay, got the guy with a dangler jacket in the field. Finally one overhead. See looks like carnage now. times that you're going into something when it is quite scary and your heart might start going a little bit. Clearly there was quite a significant impact. He's got two IV accesses, okay. had no pain relief at the moment, that is complaining of the neck pain we have next okay. collar on him. So no, no chest injury that, that you can no identify. That we're okay. aware of. We have a van versus an articulated lorry, one male approximately 50 years old, heavily trapped, unable to say at the moment whether he's major trauma positive or negative until we can get to his lower limbs and pelvis. Angley, one of them? 137.98, exact 100% on air. Okay. What about some pain relief for him? What okay, can, can I just work out what the plan is? Because he looks to me like he's not going to come out that easily even once we've rolled the dashboard. To be fair, there isn't much metal left around him. <laughs> Well, he's, he's, he's kind of obviously stable. I think we should roll the dashboard and see what we've got. Let's get him out. He 
he was bleeding from somewhere. Um, he had injuries we hadn't even properly diagnosed yet. We needed to work out what was going on as soon as possible. Carl, if I watch the obs, can you maintain visual with him? Thank you. The pressure that's caused by, by the dashboard could actually have been stopping the patient from bleeding. Certainly there have been instances of patients bleeding to death at that point, just when the pressure's been removed. But the team now face another challenge. He's hurt his leg to move, okay. So if he's bleeding to death, we're not doing very well here, are we? Steve needs ketamine, a powerful painkiller carried by the air ambulance. But it can affect a patient's ability to breathe. Okay, if we give some if we give stuff in, are we gonna be able to then release him if we need to? Because we, we don't want to give him any ketamine if he's trapped. As soon as they're ramming, it's ramming onto his legs and he's in agony. The thing I'm worried about is this is gonna take how long is this gonna take? Steve has been stuck in his vehicle for almost an hour. His chances of surviving extreme blood loss lessen with each passing minute. What's just stopping it going forward? Says they're ramming in the plastic. Yeah. He's just, he's just pushing his leg. to his legs. What they're yeah. trying to do is get his feathers in there and simultaneously move that plastic away while they're ramming it forward. Yeah. Blood loss is a, is a killer. There becomes a point where you just have to get them out. Steve, this is going to hurt for about five minutes and oh, we're going to... No, yeah. <laughs> no, but I just want to warn you, mate, because yeah. until we can get you out, we can give you some strong pain relief. So it's going to really hurt for about five minutes. Just bear with us and we'll give you something nice and strong to get rid of it, all right? Yeah. Just grit your teeth, buddy. of Helimed 85 are attending the scene of a road traffic accident on the A10 in Norfolk. So Steve has snapped his thigh bone and the bone was exposed. It's one of the strongest bones in your body, so the amount of force that it takes to, uh, to break that is incredible. We just need to get him out, mate. Just, just ram that forward and get him out. Yeah. Just greet your teeth, Steve. Five minutes, mate, we'll have you out. Steve, that's on me. You got some pants on, bud? No, okay. Pain in here? Right, okay, don't look at that, mate. Look that way. Okay, so we've got open mid cart, mid shaft femur. Um, he's now free. He's in a lot of pain. So, do you want to give him stuff and get a bit of, ke bit of ketamine, facilitate extrication? Right, Steve, now that you're free, mate, we're going to give you a drug that's going to make you feel drowsy and you'll remember nothing about this, all right? OK, guys, listen up. Right, everybody listen, please. The plan is I'm going to give him this drug, and once I give him the drug, I want him out in two minutes, all right? He will scream out, but he won't feel nothing. Is everybody clear? Yeah. Brilliant. Ketamine is a horse tranquilizer. good thing about that drug is that afterwards they will remember nothing about the whole incident, but it can be quite alarming to hear someone after they've been given ketamine to be screaming. Steve? Yeah. Are you alright, mate? I'm yeah. fine. What? I'm yeah. fine. You've had better days? I've had a lot better days. Where are you? Uh, sitting in a van. Sitting in a van, mate, are you? Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Okay, that'll Yeah, let's go. Fine. Right. He's hey, going to hurt and he's going to shout. He's okay. going to scream and he's going to hurt, but he'll remember nothing oh, afterwards. Oh, no. We ain't going to hurt you, mate. Don't you worry about that. Uh, right. Now. Where am I? Yeah, all right, mate. Whoa, 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 whoa. OK. Ready, set, and move. Let's get this. OK. OK, keep going. Oh, shit. All right. Ready, set, move. Okay. Get the board up. Come on, right. You're not dying, mate. You got the board? OK. Let's get the board out. There you go. All right. That way down. You came around, mate. Let's get OK. Right, I've got traction on the leg. Let's have the board out. Oh, crap, shit, come on. Oh, buddy. Ah! Can you get hold of that leg and just keep hold of it there? Just keep pulling it. You got it? Steve, hello. Hello. My name's Dr Pam. I need you to take wow. some nice... 
Steve. Ow. I, hello. Does your chest hurt when I press Ow. on it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Chest feels intact. What I suggest we do, we need to splint on that. Right knee, right knee, right knee. Oh, no, don't mind it. I'll give him some more ketamine in a sec. So it's, it's an empty negative, I think. Yeah, I'll give control okay. the ring a second. Okay, so give that ketamine a couple of minutes to work. Pam and then we'll pull his leg, all right? Yeah. Who has the oxygen? Can I have it back? The main purpose is to, to pull the leg straight. And by doing this, we um, uh, reduce the blood loss and reduce the pain. Okay. Oh, I think so, yes. Am I swearing, aren't I? No, you're not, darling. Hey, you doing, mate? The helicopter's coming in light without a patient. We're going to be coming to you by road. He's got an open mid shaft femur. Um, no other obvious injuries at the moment. He's had some ketamine, had some fentanyl. Happy? Well, I think we're there, mate. Let's just be off the scene within five minutes. We need to go. Time. You're absolutely right. I think you've broken your leg, mate. Right away. Yeah. Okay. Well, as bad as it first looked, yeah. though, so I think you might have got off fairly lightly, to be honest, looking at the front of your truck. Well done, everybody. Good job, up. Thank you. Do you think we need to put any more traction on this, Pam? Yes, I do. Right. Sorry, darling. That's it. That's, That's this goes. Sorry, I know. We're horrible. You're all right there, Steve. You're doing really well, mate. We're on our way to hospital now. I'm so sweaty. I can't get my gloves on now. It's going to be a bit cold on your leg, mate. And me yeah, I think it is a bit squashy, to be honest. Oh, my bone was all stuck out my knee. It was. But it's not anymore. Carl's put it straight. But I think it'll need an operation to put it completely straight. Oh, dear. It'll need a big pin in the middle of it. Oh, dear, dear. You all right there, mate? Uh, yeah? We're about two minutes from the hospital now, all right? Okay, yeah? Yeah? Oh, no, that's a woman's five minutes. Uh -huh. be about an hour. <laughs> it's a bit rude, isn't it, Steve? Yeah. Bloody rude, in my opinion. A woman's I'll be ready in five minutes is the same as a man's I'll be home I in five minutes. I get ready more quickly than my husband. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're going to pump up. We'll just four, please. Hello, Angelo. Angelo. He's nice and stable. We can get him over if you're happy. Ready, set, and lift. Yeah. OK, this is Steve. He's a 55-year-old gentleman driving a white van involved in a head-on collision with an articulated lorry. This is bleeding quite significantly. He's had 40 of ketamine to extricate him and 100 micrograms of fentanyl, which will be about 30 minutes ago now. He's been cardiovascular stable at all times. OK. Thanks, Angelo. Thank you. It is always a relief to feel you're in the place of definitive care and people have heard the important things that you said. Steve will be prepared for surgery to repair his leg. Even if successful, it could take years to recover fully. Now, what's your trick for doing this easily? Right, yeah. right so... <laughs> Pull your handle. Put it in as normal. So yeah. To, 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 that's where it gets stuck, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Stand on the step. Oh, and just lift a bit, OK. There's no point us getting involved, Pam, is no. it? No. <laughs> <laughs> When we're flying back from the job, that's the time we can relax and just enjoy a bit of relaxing downtime. Thank you, Worm. Lifted for Kingsley and returning to base. Do you want the biscuits up front? I'm fine, thanks, Pam. The Eden Valley, Cumbria. Home to Helimed 58 and the Great North Air Ambulance's Penrith site. I normally do about one shift per month at Penrith. You know, we've got cows in the fields and the hustle and bustle of the city, you know, that, that just doesn't exist there, so it's nice. Especially working with Stuart. I've never seen Stuart um, stressed. I've been working with Mike for about three years now. 
we may not look like the dynamic duo, but uh, we're ready for anything. Hello, Teesside Air, that's Gandhi speaking. No problem, and Mountain Rescue are going as well. OK, tell him at 5-8 around that way. A report has come in of a hill walker with a suspected stroke 30 miles away. A 40-minute flight for Helimed 5 8 our window to get the patient in a hospital so we can give drugs to reverse the effects of the stroke. Lake District is a beautiful place to fly over, but can be one of the most dangerous. Oh, I might get a bit bumpy in a few seconds. Yeah, looks like it's getting a bit dark. It's flying into a valley, so we had the ridges on either side of the aircraft. You get turbulent air coming from different directions. The location is now directly below them, but even experienced pilots like Owen can find landing in these kinds of conditions challenging. The issues in this place then is the winds coming out from the old manic on the towards the village itself. So we've been down dropping air, being a bit bumpy. Yeah. Um, but we'll suck it and see, see what it's like. When you know someone on the ground needs your help, it does drive you on a little bit, but uh, you can't really risk a life to save a life. The turbulent weather is making it impossible to land safely. The team need a plan B. Hey, can you go over that mark, can you? Perfect, yeah. Because if they're there, they can drive them down towards your eyes or back at the bottom. Yeah, kind of spit, um, We have made a couple of approaches to uh, landing sites, but again, buffeted by the wind. Uh, just wondering if we can land uh, somewhere in Coniston itself. I love you. Hiya, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Each here with you about seven minutes. How we can get that oxygen supply to the brain re-established, the better um, the patient will do long term. Every minute counts. Hiya, how are you doing? I'm Mike, I'm on the doctors. What was his name? John. Hello, John. John, can you hear me? I'm just gonna press on your eye. Did he, did he complain of any pain or any chest or anything like that? People think it won't be active, but they're small, about two millimetres. How long was it? You know, before you know when he was just not quite right to when he became like this? How, how long? Well, he wasn't quite right from so long time. It mm. might have been about quarter past one. Right. So when we managed to, we got here and then we suddenly realised there was something wrong. Yeah. Because he had this bit just one, five minutes ago. Yeah. Need to wear uh, the RSI, to be honest, Stu. I mean, yeah, he's, he's pretty much extending. I'm thinking John has either had a blood vessel in his brain that's burst or he's had a stroke. Both need urgent medical attention. His brain is critically ill. See how his, his arms are just moving in yeah. this funny way? Yeah. I just wonder if he is going to have another yeah. fit. To see a husband like that, pretty sure she thought he was dying.
crew of Helimed 58 were attending a call out in the remote location of Coniston. Jonas collapsed with a suspected stroke while out hill walking with his wife, Viv. As soon as I arrived, I knew we were serious. In situations like these, we've got to work calm, methodically. There's a lot to accomplish, but I don't want to worry his wife. Stu, he's just about fit. Um, could I get some uh, midazolam? All this means is that if he has another fit, I can give him some medicine to stop it, all right? That's so all we're going to do now is we're just going to get him outside, OK? And then we can get him back to the vehicle, then we can get him down to the helicopter where I can do a bit more. Yeah. Then, OK. I decided to do a, a rapid sequence induction, or an RSI, which is a, an emergency general anaesthetic, in order to control his breathing, his oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. I need to get John down to the helicopter to do it. Thanks very much, lads. You got it? How are you doing, Stu? Right, right we'll, use the, we'll use the green line for the RSI. One problem that might stop me getting the tube in is if the, the sun comes out and the darker it is, the easier it is for me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna start this in the next uh, next minute or so, alright? It's um all or nothing. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna give drugs and those drugs are gonna cause your patient to stop breathing. Just have a look first. We've got 30 seconds or so to get that tube between the vocal cords and stop breathing for them, or they're going to deteriorate. Yeah, I could do with that. Um, yeah, shake it, lads. Okay, can I have the bougie? Tube is going on. Tube's on half of the bougie. Are we? Uh, it's a big gamble. Yeah. But the gamble's with their life. Okay. Cuffs up. Okay. Not very difficult to see that actually. So, so great, our arms are looking good. So we'll get moving in the next couple of minutes just because I think the rain's going to come in. So, feet first, please. We'll get them in and then I'll bring that across, okay? Right, fellas, that's an awesome job. Well done. We've got a male in his 50s that's become unwell whilst walking. He's then deteriorated to GCS3. Uh, no, I think they're suspecting he might need neurosurgery. He'll be with you in 22 zero minutes. There's a lot of vibration, so it can be quite a challenge. What if you had an MI or something? A shock. So then how long have we got left to run? Eleven minutes. Okay, I'll just have to leave this up and we'll just have to put it down. Is it too moved? Yeah, I might have slipped a bit. Not a good dress, like in a minute. John is showing dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide in his body as the team struggled to maintain his breathing. Incredible relief to, to step down on the tarmac. 
I know I'm at my hospital and I know I can hand him over to my colleagues and the patient's still alive. Right, so this is John. He's 60. Um, he was up with the old man at Coniston, felt unwell, kind of lost his speech and then collapsed about 1500. My diagnosis is either he's had a big CVA or he's had a bleed. Sorry, he's a great through. He was a difficult. He's a, a great a difficult. Three, was yeah, he? yeah. John will undergo tests over the next few hours to determine the cause of his collapse. Cheers, see you later. We do some tough jobs in some very tough situations. It's a privilege to look after these people. Seventy miles southeast lies the headquarters of the East Anglian Air Ambulance. Okay then. So, yeah. two times life jackets. Yeah, check. Cling film times one. Hungarian doctor Akos Soti has been working for the charity for just over two years. Yeah, my nickname is. Shit magnet, so. <laughs> it's definitely true. When you realise you're working with Akos, you, you're in for a rough ride, you know you are. We'll see. You never know. Hello, Norwich. Thank you, Golf. 525 and 122. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Helamed 85 has been requested to attend an incident at Caister on Sea, a 12 minute flight from their base. is part of the heap is basically the old person's break. It can easily happen. Okay. Alright, let's have a look. Where can we go? Oh god. Oh, I can land on that waste ground, we should get you out to the road behind the building. I'm 99% sure there's a gate, so it should be alright. Alright, I'm going in this time, wind's behind us at the moment. And I go on that um, little car park. Good look out for wires, everyone, please. Left looks good, underneath looks good. Yeah, all good up to the right. Now I'm going down there. Yeah, underneath, clear. Yeah. Okay, got it. That, that's... Hi, everyone, I am Akos. Hello there. This is Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Marjorie's 95, <laughs> querying. She's late today. We're querying mid-shaft um, femur. Oh, OK. She's had 10 of morphine, had a gram of paracetamol. She's been supplementing the internox as and when. And still um, in pain. Still no improvement. <laughs> OK, and it was an accident. It's just one of those things that happened. <laughs> OK. I don't know what happened. The ground crew had given all the pain relief they were able to give, and they were still struggling with her pain. Are you allergic to anything? Any medication? She's dead. So, okay, I, so, sorry. Are you allergic to anything? Any medication? No. No. As far as I know, I don't take much. All right. Okay, when was your last meal? Yeah, we really haven't had a meal. Yes, I've been on the same, 44. I've just had a snack, which I was going to have a proper uh -huh. meal now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you happy to sedate on that? Yes. Yes. Ketamine we carry is a brilliant drug, but it has its own risks, and especially at her age, we have to be very cautious. Okay, so where is the pain? It's all in here. It's all in here. Yeah. Okay. So what we gotta do, going to give you some very strong pain relief, and make you a bit sleepy, and by that time we are going to straighten your leg. Uh, probably will be asleep and won't remember anything, okay? 
that's 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 our plan. All right. And my daughter all that. <laughs> okay. Akosh can resolve Marjorie's pain, but there is one potential problem which even he cannot control. So this is the drug we were talking about, okay? The mirror may feel a bit sleepy. Yeah. Okay, I gave 35. Beautiful. I like that. Okay. Actually, are you with us? Not anymore. She has fallen asleep. Okay, so the leg is yours, Rod. Hello, Marjorie. Thank you. Okay. She won't be aware of it. She'll make some noise. Yeah. 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 Okay, go for it. Lots of quarters. Marjorie, are you with us? Open your eyes, look at me. Marjorie. Oh, no, she's not with us. All right, so let's move because the ketamine is going to wear off shortly. Some of these realignments can take a lot of pulling and pressure to get them back into place. And other people can just change their positioning or will just move them slightly. Stop. Oh, uh, that's gone back into place. Good. And that is exactly what happened in Marjorie's uh, situation. Something just really popped back into place, to be honest with you, but it's still external rotation. All of us are fine. Marjorie, Marjorie, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, all right, just stay relaxed, okay? Yeah, all right, let's move. Let's get some cover. <laughs> yes. Marjorie, we are here with you. I'm with you, Mum. If you have any problems, just shout out, and we are here to help, okay? Okay. Good. Oh. Being sick isn't very dignified. I try to reassure it's not a not a big deal for us. We see it each day. You all right? I think so. Okay. Sorry. So no, that's no problem. It's mainly the side effect of the morphine you got from the ambulance, okay? So never mind. It's not your fault. It's nothing. An experience like this can really scary for a patient. Holding someone's hand, it can be as important as the medications we gave. Marjorie will go straight to theater for surgery on her leg. I don't know how things will break up for Marjorie. The older you get, the harder it is to recover. I hope the outcome will be good for her. Tees Valley Airport, headquarters of the Great North Air Ambulance. Manning the control desk today is paramedic Andy Mawson. Teesside Air Desk. Whereabouts, sorry? Can you give me a grid, please? 853. Uh, brilliant. OK, mate. But they are on their way. Probably take them about 15 minutes from now. Great stuff. Dr Mike Davison and the team of Helimed 58 are off again, this time to the rural area of Ulverston. Uh, it's a crew request to guy, kick by a horse with our ribs and through our door. As soon as I hear the word horse, I know there could be some serious injuries. Uh, 
Flying. I think it's just um, lack of control. I still can't work out how I ended up doing what I do today. Not, not a vehicle, actually. Till 12 o'clock. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Right, I don't like landing in the paddocks because they're always a bit dusty. Uh, so one of those two fields. Right, my feet are over this fence now. Okay. I'm in the army. I'm a colonel in the, the Royal Army Medical Corps. Obviously, you know, you're in, in different environments, jungle, deserts, you've got some bullets and bombs chucked in your general direction. So I, I enjoy that. I like the challenge of that. You're just in the ambulance, are they? Yeah. All right. I think now, if someone tried to take away the air ambulance work, yeah, there'd be a massive hole in my life. Hiya. Good morning. Hi, I'm Mike from the Great North Ambulance. What's happened? Right, this is Mark, 40 years old. Have you been walking or anything since this happened? Yeah, no, I stayed down. Have you? Right. I'm, I think I'm fairly tough. Well, so. <laughs> where did he get you? Oh. In that area there. If I press between the, the front and the back there, does that hurt you at the yeah. side? A little bit, yeah. <sighs> Good man, just, just kind of medium sized bits. Mark has a young horse. It's been injured and it's on the walking work and he was walking around the menage with it and then it reared up and and bucked and kicked him um, with its back legs. Mark actually catapulted to the floor and uh, then he couldn't get up. It's one of those things. Let's have a little feel above your collarbone. It's just sometimes if you just nick your, your lung, you'll find a, a little sign up yeah. there, but that's all normal. So your belly here, I blew it out so it's big and fat, and it touches my hand. That hurts you, yeah? Yeah. So just suck it in now so it's skinny. Okay. <laughs> that hurts you across here. Oh, thank you. How, how far is it by land? To Preston, yeah, for about yeah. 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 On the off chance, if you did have a problem, you, you know, your spleen lies just underneath there, but you can't tell for certain without a CT scan. Now, we could take you to a normal A&E department, um, but if there was a, a problem with it, um, the trauma centre at Preston, that's, in a, that's um, for, they've, they've got, you know, they've got um, surgeons and, and specialists that are trained in this area, so y your care would yeah, be yeah. better. Internal bleeding from a ruptured spleen can cause death in a matter of hours. Mike is taking no chances. If he did deteriorate, I've got blood and blood cutting drugs on board. It's a no-brainer. We've got to fly him. Now you get better, Mark. You've got a wedding to go to next week. I've got asses to shoot tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't worry about that though, mate. Yeah. This is his fiance. <laughs> He'll be fine. He'll be dancing on that dance floor. <laughs> You've got to keep up, that's it, and slide in there, that's it. Yeah, perfect. I'm off to Jamaica, honeymoon. Yeah. Drop in blood pressure can be a sign that he's bleeding internally from his spleen. Mark will now have a CT scan to check if he has damaged his spleen. You're spot on, pulse-wise. You never budged. About 70 to 74, blood pressure was 140. He gets married in a week, um, so he needs to be he needs to be fit for that, for, fit for a few beers. Steve, 
Okay, this is going to hurt for about five minutes, and oh, we're going. No, yeah. Off. Police have this phrase, life-changing injuries, and that sums it up perfectly, actually. Lives can be dramatically and suddenly changed. Take one of those things and happen. <laughs> OK. I don't know what happened. Now you get better, Mark. You've got a wedding to go to next week. I wasn't aware of how dangerous it was to rupture my spleen. For 24 hours, it was touch and go. Where the surgeons went in and removed it. Yeah, I was slightly concerned that that wouldn't make the wedding. But luckily, we came out in time to bottle down the aisle. <laughs> and had a lovely day. Luckily, um, everything's worked out fine. We've got our daughter Lily here now. And um, married life's good. <laughs> We're going to start this in the next minute or so, all right? It's the most severe growth rate there is, which was uh, a bit of a shock at the time. It might be a year or it might be ten years, depending, because everybody reacts differently. The best thing to do is to enjoy the current day and not worry too much about the days that are coming thereafter. Needless to say, I was able to make a bit of a donation and I would also encourage anybody else to make a donation to these organisations. I'm still alive and able to get some of the things sorted out. <laughs> you know, for, for my dear wife, who has been an absolute angel throughout all of this. I don't think there's any other real jobs that you're constantly reminded of the fragility of life. Life can change in, in seconds and we, we see that. As I say, always, you know, always make the most of what you've, you've got.